Our farm is about 17 acres total. We grow predominantly apples. We now have, with grafted varieties, we probably have over 26 different varieties or more. We grow all organically, and we try to make this a very sustainable operation. I think we finally kind of found our niche when we decided to do the U-Pick operation, because that turned into something that I love because of the interaction with our customers who really want to know about farming. And they appreciate that we are trying to do things in a more natural way. We broadly look for natural approaches to controlling agricultural pests. Natural enemies are out there doing pest control for free. Most of the time, most of the things that might be pests are being killed by some natural enemy. And oftentimes when we have problems, it's because we went in and sprayed and killed all the natural enemies. Things that weren't pests before suddenly are. You're spraying more and more. You get the evolution of resistance and things kind of go downhill. So anytime we don't have to go in there and intervene, it's to our benefit financially and ecologically and everything else. I grew up here um, on the farm. It was my uncle that was farming it. When we inherited it, it had been farmed conventionally for 50 years probably, and the soil was kind of dead and there wasn't much wildlife left. It was kind of barren. The trees were aging out and dying. Um, so it's been like nine years of replanting trees and starting to develop wildlife habitat and um, places where beneficial insects can prosper. So there's different ways that um, predator and parasitoid and pathogen biodiversity can impact wild control. So on the one hand, there's complementarity. So that's when you bring different species together that have different ecological niches and they complement each other so that there's sort of a blanket of attack. So anywhere the pest goes in the environment or in its life cycle, there's something there that can attack it. So that's kind of a beneficial aspect of greater biodiversity. Um, but there also can be negative aspects. So things like a praying mantis, um, some of the larger spiders, a lot of their prey are gonna be other natural enemies. So it's the interference where they're killing one another. The trick is how you can manipulate the environment to kind of balance out the benefits versus the harms. It seems like this interference is most common in kind of big monoculture, really intensified farming systems where you don't have a lot of prey species and you have very little plant diversity. In that case, oftentimes you have maybe just a few pests, a few species of natural enemies, and those natural enemies can bump into each other quite a bit. Simplicity creates a lot of opportunities for things to attack each other in ways that we don't want. But if you have a more diverse farming system where they can really find their own role, feed on the things that they want to feed on, natural enemies are less likely to attack one another. We began putting in hedgerows. We have now five areas that we regard as hedgerows. There's elderberry, there's deer grass, there's toyon, there's ceanothus, there's wild rose, different varieties of sage, plants that are good for cover, good food sources, good living places. Um, that will allow the um, existence of natural predators. And they do a good job. We don't always get to see the specific result of what they do, but we sense it because the trees are so much more healthy. Like last year, we didn't even have coddling moth. Sometimes the natural enemies are so happy in their wildflower strips that it's hard to get them to jump back into the crop, which is oftentimes more simplified, a little bit harsher environment. What can really, really be effective are things like no-till. So you're gonna make a more complex environment. If you have something like thatch on the ground, you have shelter for the natural enemy, so they don't have to leave the field to find a place to hide from the things that eat them. When you have a lot of decaying plant matter in the soil, that's food for things like springtails and other decomposers that can be an important alternative prey for your natural enemies. We are a no-till operation. That was one of the first changes that we made. There's a total ecosystem on this farm and we have been fostering it. We leave a tremendous amount of vegetation around our trees. And the trick is that you have to make a decision to tolerate a certain amount of crop damage. We limit it as much as we can, but we want to keep those beneficials on the property 
multiplying and healthy because we know at some later date they will be much more necessary perhaps because we have an outbreak of some kind. Yeah, those predatory little insects are just really invaluable.